In today's video, we're talking the PlayStation 5 logo reveal, breaking records on social media, and showcasing that this console is going to be a gigantic release. We'll talk all about that. Also, Wargroove is getting some free DLC. Double Trouble launches February 6th for Xbox One and Switch, and it'll be coming soon on PlayStation 4 as well. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is said to be a lengthy game, 40 hours long if you rush through it, and then... If you want to do all of the content, it is going to be a sizable experience. And lastly, Frictional Games' teaser website for its next game is slowly evolving, so that game should be announced rather soon. We'll talk that at the end of this video, but first up, all the news has been on PlayStation 5, and everybody is talking about it right now, while CES did it bring with it a colossal amount of information. What we did get was the logo for the console, and hey, I guess that was enough to get people excited. Sony's The Future is coming pre-CES teaser didn't amount to the most exciting of of updates on its next generation console, but it sure is generating a lot of heat on social media. Website VGC notes today that according to data compiled by the outlet, the PlayStation 5 logo reveal is the most liked Instagram image ever from a gaming company. The image at this point has recorded a whopping 5 million likes and 136,000 comments in its first 48 hours. That eclipses what VGC believes uh, is the second most liked image for a gaming company, Fortnite's Avenger Endgame crossover announcement, which amassed 2.7 million so that is a sizable increase and yeah i'm not gonna say that social media numbers are going to be a direct barometer for how a console is gonna do obviously getting a like on an instagram and getting a consumer to drop 500 dollars on a console is gonna be completely different however it does bode very well and there's a lot of talk surrounding the playstation 5 on social media Everywhere you go, as far as gaming is concerned, right now the talk is all about next generation, and that's kind of crazy given the fact that this generation still has a bunch of high-key titles that are gonna be released. Last of Us Part 2, Dreams, Ghost of Tsushima, and that's only from an exclusive standpoint, of course. There's Final Fantasy VII Remake and everything like that, Cyberpunk 2077, but a lot of the attention is shifting towards the PlayStation 5 right now, and with all of these numbers and how the console is doing, I think if you want to get a PlayStation 5, just like every major console release, I really think you should be of the mindset of, hey, I gotta pre-order this thing when pre-orders go live. I gotta go to my local GameStop or whatever the case may be, and I gotta pre-order the damn thing because these are gonna go really, really fast. Even if it is priced at $500, which I think will be the case given all of the compelling hardware that's being stuffed into the PS5, even at that price point, I think this is gonna sell out really, really quickly. So if you want one this holiday, when pre-orders go live, I imagine that's gonna be around May or June. You are going to want to put your pre-order in, uh, so you'll be good to go by the time the PS5 PS5 is ready to release in the fall of this year. So there you have it, PlayStation 5 at this point, this early in the game, shattering records. And if you think the hype is high right now, imagine when we actually see the console, imagine when we see game reveals, if it is a Horizon Zero Dawn 2, if it is a Demon Souls remake, if it is some other major exclusive, that is going to set the world ablaze. But right now we have a logo and it's shattering records, so this console release is going to be absolutely enormous. And it is coming in late 2020, however, we do know that information is going to be rolling out in the next few months or so. All right, next up, Wargroove's free DLC Double Trouble launches February 6th for Xbox One and Switch. However, PlayStation 4, it will be coming soon. We don't get an official release window. And this is what's noted about the DLC. Team up and lead the outlaw faction to strategic victory with new criminal commanders in Wargroove Double Trouble. Wargroove Double Trouble adds a brand new co-op enabled campaign story which introduces outlaw commanders, the mighty Wolfar troublemaker twins Errol and Orla, as well as the Maleficent Vesper. After an unexpected kidnapping and some severe ransom demands, your group of rogues have no choice but to perform the biggest heist that Orania has ever seen, plundering riches from the Imperial Palace of Heavensong, Stone Mountain Fort or Felheim, the Celandine Vault of Cherry Stone, and the Florin's Iron Root Reserves, but do you have the chops to get the job done? It won't be easy, but at least you'll have two new units at your command, thieves and riflemen. Take tactical advantage of these new recruits, sending forth your thief to ransack enemy gold, and carefully positioning your riflemen to take out an Enemy troops. The game's key features touts brand new co-op story campaign can be played couch co-op, online co-op, or even solo. Three new roguish commanders, two new units, thieves and riflemen, new arcade missions, competitive online quick play matches, public and private multiplayer lobbies, new volcano map theme, and more updates to the custom editor tools, outlaw music tracks composed by phonetic hero, and much more. Again, all of that content is coming via the way of free DLC, so it's great to see that Chucklefish have been committed to Wargroove as an experience. I mean, it's already great and has 
has a lot of longevity with all of the user creativity options, but now when you throw on free DLC on top of that, that just makes the game even better and really cool to see how successful this game has been. Given that it was a smaller downloadable release, I don't think everyone was expecting the game to set the world ablaze, however, it has done rather good for itself. Alright, next up, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is a game that I have been rather skeptical with. Obviously, I'm very excited for the game given that I am a Dragon Ball fan and the idea of going through the entirety of the Dragon Ball story in an open world action RPG, yeah, that has me excited. However, some of the gameplay looks a little bit eh, but from a content standpoint, it is looking pretty sharp. The average length of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot has been revealed today alongside some other new details on the game. According to the recent review published on Famitsu, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is around 40 hours long without outside content and to see everything that the game has to offer players will need over a hundred hours now I take that 40 hour and a hundred hour mark with a grain of salt just because I've noticed that whenever a reviewer puts out oh this game is 30 to 40 hours this game hundred hours if you want to do all of the content if I personally rush through a game or even if I decide to do everything I usually complete the game considerably quicker than what the reviewer suggests however that is just my experience I'm not trying to throw shade that's just what I have experienced in the past but nonetheless that is still a sizable amount of content. Even if Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is just 30 hours going through the content without doing the side stuff, that is really good. And then we know that there's going to be a lot of side stuff. There's going to be a lot of exploration uh, to be had with Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. So cool to see that the game is being received rather well at this point. The Famitsu review also praised how the original DBZ story has been reproduced in the game and the open world experience, which gives the game a slightly bigger scope and provides some variation in the gameplay experience with mechanics like Dragon Ball, Search and cooking. The game also features plenty of collectibles and smooth controls. DBZ Kakarot features the entirety of the Dragon Ball story, starting with the Saiyan Saga, Raditz's arrival on Earth, and Vegeta and Nappa, all the way to the end of the Boo arc, so you're getting the entirety of the story of Dragon Ball Z, and that does make sense with the game being 40 hours long if you just rush through it. That is a lot of content to cover, so I can understand why it would be such a lengthy game, and then throw in all of the side content, obviously it's gonna be even bigger. The game is also noted to feature side content starring characters who don't have a huge role in the main story, expanding the experience considerably. As far as how exactly Famitsu received it, it got pretty good reviews. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot received a 34 out of 40 review score, with the four reviewers scoring the game two nines and two eights. That's pretty good, however, Famitsu tends to have higher ratings for Japanese games. Of course, they are a Japanese outlet, and a lot of the times the games aren't received quite as well over here in the States. I imagine that the game is going to end up somewhere in the mid-70s to low 80s over here in the States, but we'll see how the game ultimately turns out when the reviews are posted within the next week, week and a half or so. Alright, and lastly, I do want to note that Soma Studio teaser website for its next game is slowly evolving. Frictional Games, obviously the guys behind Soma and the Amnesia Games are working on a brand new title, and the last time we talked about the Frictional Games' teaser website, we noted that there was a mere white dot sat blinking on a single webpage. Well, now it has evolved, and a quick check-in with the website shows the blinking dot evolving into something grander it's larger inside and appears to be pulsating at a tad more rapid pace. Still, Frictional Games themselves seem rather silent about what this game is. It does seem like it's yet another horror game with all of the mystery and intrigue that is surrounding it. I'm hoping that we hear a reveal and announcement of this game rather soon because it's been quite a while since we uh, saw Frictional's last game. I mean, when did Soma come out? Was it 2015, 2016? It has been quite a while, so it should be around time we hear about their next game, and I think their game has a lot of potential. Late in 2017, Frictional Games announced it had two projects in development at the time. Both were in varying stages of production, though the team offered no concrete details about either of them. One in particular was said to be in full production with a majority of Frictional Games' focus on it. For the time being, there's no way of knowing that if this is the game that's currently being teased or if it's the other game, but if it has Frictional Games' name on it, it's probably going to be a rather good game. And that's going to conclude this video. Again, the PlayStation 5 logo is breaking records on social media, the most liked gaming image in Instagram history, and it's breaking records at a rapid pace. The last record was set by Fortnite's Avengers Endgame crossover, and that had 2.7 million. We're talking nearly double for the PS5 logo. And again, it's just a logo. It's not like it's a announcement of a ton of games or anything like that to go along with it. Literally just a logo. Wargroup's free DLC Double Trouble launches February 6th for X1 and Switch PS4 coming soon. DBZ Kakarot is said to be 40 hours long. If you want to do all of the content, it'll be 100 hours. And then Frictional Games is teasing their next game and it seems like the website is evolving as well. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. 
Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.